I'm Joey Ramon here from the famous Ramones. I remember like when the Ramones first came on, you know, came out, it was like, um, kind of us versus them. People don't realize how grim it was in the, uh, in the mid-70s. Yeah, rock and roll uh, didn't need a, an oxygen tent. I think it needed an iron lung at that point. It was radio who was, you know, like, um, they didn't want to play anything new. They just wanted to stick to um, the safe stuff. Jimmy Osmond and, uh, and Yes, and not, not together, but, uh, <laughs> but I mean, oh God, it was such appalling crap. The Ramones came along and they were totally unique and, and they did not kiss any ass whatsoever. Yeah, after we were signed, it was Talking Heads and then um, the Dead Boys and Richard Hell and um, Sham 69 were signed as well. It didn't matter if you know you considered yourself geeky or dorky or smart or dumb or ugly or handsome or cool or not cool. I can remember the first interview I saw with them in like the late 70s on TV. It was the first time I saw like a band, you know, tell the interviewer just screw off, you know, and, and just walk up and get off the camera. I was like, man, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> with the release of our album in 76, we sort of, uh, in, we kind of infiltrated into um, the mainstream and sort of turned things around 360 degrees, you know. It seemed to be something that was um, all about just, you know, uh, this attitude of just being uh, an alienated American teenager. What really mattered was, you know, the music and it was the way it was played and the way it was executed and, and presented. It really like um, revolutionized rock and roll and gave it a real kick in the ass and brought back the, um, the attitude and excitement and fun that was uh, no longer there. I did not look like Robert Plant, you know? I wasn't as flamboyant as Jimi Hendrix. You know, I wasn't cool as, as you know, Joe Perry. You know, I, I didn't play guitar like Van Halen. I was a young musician, you know, and, and I, I wanted to be like my idols, but I, you know, physically and personally, it was, it was not like them, and I knew that. If it would have only been virtuosos that I would have looked up to as a little kid, then I would have never gotten started because it was just too frustrating to, to think, oh, well, maybe I can play like Jimmy Page in 10 years, you know? It, that, for me, that wasn't enough. Because they like, never expected. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean, so he's just like a music fan, a music yeah. buff, a nerdy yeah. music buff. Yeah, he's just like a big dork and like, loves just all gangly and just like funny looking and it, it's okay for him to be like, oh, like a rock star. When you look at Joey Ramone, you think uh, no Gentile would be that ugly. He has to be a Jew. I think Joey is like one of the sexiest men on earth. Right? When I discovered stuff like the Ramones and the Germs and it all clicked in my head, I realized that music was something that I could do right now. A lot of people learn to play um, guitar and bass to uh, the Ramones cause, because it's easy to play along to. It's, not easy. I mean, if you try and write a song like that, it's bloody difficult. They were really sort of genuine American kids without any sort of school pretensions. Yet, musically and lyrically, they were far more sort of radical and avant-garde than any of these other bands can actually sort of express in a way. The people that start really start like whole genres and stuff like that is because they don't care about being recognized and all that time that other people are wasting on getting recognition, they're spending on being more creative. You know, there were like a few like pioneers scattered here and there that that were passionate about the, about the music, you know what I mean? It wasn't about, strictly about big business, it was still about the music, you know what I mean? See, I feel there's a way for everyone to be able to make their quarters, but still have, be able to play, you know, like everything. We were playing clubs in New York, particularly 
the Coventry, which was a club in Queens, and there would always be this tall guy in the background with these glasses on and this beetle haircut, and he was a, at least a head and shoulders above most people. And it wasn't until this band called the Ramones came out that I said, hey, there's that guy, and it was uh, Joey Ramone. I remember Joey being like, just really tall, because the stage is really high, and just tall and just hovering. He had that hover, you know, his slump hover. Joey was frail. Joey was not a loud man. He was more rational, please don't kill me, um, than the other Ramones. This is a very early picture of Joey and Mickey, aged five and two. Aren't they adorable? Adorable. They're both very wonderful people. I'm very proud of who they are. They're great guys. We have a great relationship, and I love them. They're great. He's supportive. He was welcoming. And it was something that wasn't in the nature of most people playing music at that time. It was very sort of competitive, obviously. Just a strange and a rock star, front man, one of the greatest rock and roll bands that's ever been on the planet Earth. The guy is shy, and so um, I wonder, often wonder how, how he had to force himself to that mic, you know, get up there on the microphone. It must have been a push, you know. Uh, I bet he never really told anyone about it. <laughs> it's it's really like I think about when I perform now. Like I mean, when we were in Washington, especially, I was thinking, uh, I was, you know, I'm I'm really genuinely excited and happy up there. I'm thinking, wow, this is fucking great, you know. Jeremone embodied the dichotomy of being awkward and larger in li than life at the same time. He was such a study in contrast that you could never really just say, you know, he looked one way and sounded another way and what he was saying, you know, was kind of coming from another angle and I think it was just, like the whole picture was so inspiring. His dreams had come true to a, to a large degree, that he felt an obligation to put something back. But he was always there. He was a fixture on the scene. Kids want to be turned on to stuff. Kids are disgusted with radio. I mean, kids are like brainwashed to like this stuff. They, they don't know any better, you know? To, I mean, I don't knock a lot of these people because I know they're fans of the Ramones. There's a lot of music out there I can't stand today. It, it, it wasn't just a self-aggrandizing thing at all. Which is usually when you see rock and roll, it's, it's very, it's a very kind of nihilistic, nepotistic exercise for people. And it can really consume you. It's all about you, and it's like people asking about you, and like let's talk about you for a while. And it's like okay, <laughs> you know. So it gets you, you know, it, it'll drive me insane because you become, you become so self, self centered. Rock and roll is all about expressing your, your individuality, and he ignored all the trends. He didn't follow anything. He set his own trend. He was so cool. I mean, he was the coolest. Because he didn't try. My favorite memory, I think, uh, vivid of Joey is, is in the middle of the Rock and Roll High School when he gets a pizza and, and like, he goes, ah, ah, ah. And I thought it was so fucking cool to see a rock star make up his own language. <laughs> One segue through the set, we do uh, Rock and Roll High School and then into Sedated and then to a beat on the Brat and I'm thinking, why not? It's fucking great. I mean, if I was, I mean, whether I'm on this side or that side, it's exciting, you know? Yeah. And the band's you know, just never sounded better and we've never been closer as uh, friends and uh, just um, really enjoyable these days. Well, fucking great bloke Joey was. God bless him. And it's, I think it's proof that there is no God, that he didn't take fucking Phil Collins. And he took Joey Ramone instead. There's, there's one who's never going to be replaced. The fact that, that this really benign, positive entity was like, you know, passed on. Inevitably, so any group of people, you're going to know somebody. It's just harder to take when it's somebody who's, you know, it's, it's got something expressive expressive talent that, you, that you know, moves you or works on your imagination. It's tough. It's almost 
like someone you know in a way, even though I'd never met him. You just live with those songs your whole entire life, and those songs mean so much to you that you know they get inside you. With Joey Ramon Place, it's about the music, it's about the movement, it's about remembering that New York is a place of freedom and of fun, and above all, it's about the love, the love that we are all here celebrating, remembering, and now... It's just like, you know, rock and roll is sin and sex and drugs and, and uh, it's, um, they want you, th you know, they want people to think the way, you know, they've been preaching to them all their lives, you know, they don't, they don't want them to deviate, you know what I mean? And uh, it's, it's crazy how it's like a small uh, minority of people. What they did and the feelings they generated, you know, go on and on and on. It's like they wrote a formula for how to make a certain kind of song, like they just invented it and then other people expand on it all the time. And it's so interesting because a band that really has something to offer will permeate music in ways that are unexpected. I think life is all about reincarnation, so uh, that's a good way to, to uh, mellow out your sadness. I know Joey is somewhere right now. God knows where, but he is somewhere. And um, I wonder if in his next life if he'll dig the remote. Sitting here thinking of you and I'm waiting for that railroad to go home. Sitting here, sitting here, thinking of you, and I'm waiting for that railroad to go home. Oh, 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 oh. oh. He never leaves our thoughts and in the underground garage. Uh, Ramones are in heavy rotation 24 hours a day. You know? So, at least, uh, you know, he's, as far as I'm concerned, he's, he's still here. Always will be. <laughs>